Hi students, um, I'm recording in a different location. I got kicked out of my uh, kitchen where I was set up before. Um, so anyway, in the last video, um, we talked about the inverting summing amplifier. So if we hooked up multiple inputs, input voltages, and connected it to the inverting input of an amplifier of an op-amp, then it would add up all those inputs and then change the sign on the output. So we also have a non-inverting summing amplifier, and it looks like this. Um, our inputs are going to be going into the non-inverting input here. And then um, we have our inverting input here. This is still going to have a feedback loop on it um, as usual. So let's do this. Let's just for an example, let's suppose we have two voltage sources. Um, I'll let this be plus minus plus minus, and then I'm going to tie both these to ground down here on the bottom. I'll extend out our ground line so that we can connect two terminals here to measure V out. So if this is V1 and this is R1 and this is V2 and this is R2, then um, the current that is originating from this source and going this way and the current that originates from this source and goes this way, this can be I1 and I2, these currents are going to meet at this node right here. They're going to combine, and then the result, I'll just call it plane I, is going to go into this non-inverting input to the op amp. Now, um, we still need to have um, a feedback loop. So what I'm going to do is, instead of having the feedback loop go up here over the op amp, I'm going to draw it down in this direction. So I'm going to have um, a resistor that goes in between the inverting input and ground. And then right here is where I'm going to connect the feedback loop. So I'll label this resistor RF for feedback, and I'll just call this RG, I guess, because F and G are close to each other in the alphabet. So then that means that um, this IG is going to i will call this IB, because this is my B input and this is my A input, and I'm going to need that for my ideal op-amp approximations. Then I'll let this current that comes into this node be IG, and then the current that comes um, around this feedback loop, I'll call this IF. Okay, great. So um, just like we did before, we're going to be using node voltages to um, evaluate the circuit. And we're going to be using the ideal op-amp approximations um, to make our lives easier. And those are, I'll write those over here so we can refer to them, the ideal op-amp approximations are that VA is equal to VB, where VA is the voltage at this input and VB is the voltage at this input. And IA is equal to IB is equal to zero. So we're going to make the approximation that there's no current that's flowing into these input terminals of our op amp. Okay, great. So I'll just put this here because I'm going to know I'm going to need these um, relationships for solving this circuit. So let me kind of um, break this up into two parts. I'm going to call this my summing circuitry because this, these are the voltage sources that are getting added together. And I'll call this my feedback circuitry. So over here in, on the left side, my summing circuitry, um, I have that I1 plus I2 is equal to I. Um, so this I here, which is the combination of I1, I2, is the current that's flowing into my um, input A. So I can go ahead and call this IA, and now it's very clear that I get to use this ideal op-amp op approximation. So this is going to be equal to zero, and that'll be useful. And then from here, um, I can use my node voltage method to replace these um, equations for current um, in terms of V and R. So if this node right here I'll just go ahead and give, give it the label VA at this node. So that way I have that I1 is equal to V1 minus VA divided by the resistor between, which is R1. So I'm going to replace this I1 with V1 minus VA over R1. And then I2, I'm going to replace that with V2 
minus VA over the resistor between, which is R2. And this is just following my node voltage method that we did last time. VA over R2, and that's going to be equal to zero. Okay, great. So then um, over here in my feedback loop, let me separate this. So my feedback circuitry is I have um, my KCL equation is going to be IF plus IG is equal to IB. IF plus IG is equal to IB because of KCL at this node right here. And then because of my ideal op-amp approximation, I have IB is equal to zero, so that's gonna be equal to zero. And I'm going to replace my IF with the voltage at this node minus the voltage at this node divided by the resistor between. So the voltage at this node is actually our V out. So now I have my V out in an equation, V out minus VB over RF is what I'm replacing IF with. Okay, so then for RG, the current um, IG is going between ground and VB. I'll go ahead and put the VB label here. Um, so the voltage here is going to be zero volts since this is connected to my ground node. So I'm going to replace IG with zero minus VB divided by RG, and that's equal to zero. Okay, great. So then um, this is going to tell me that V out minus VB is equal to, if I bring this term over here, this will be um, VB times RF over RG. Great, so then I have another VB term here, so I'll go ahead and bring that over here. So I'll have V out all by itself. And this is gonna give me an equation of the output in terms of um, one of the inputs of the op-amp. So this will be VB plus VB times RF over RG. Therefore, this is VB times one plus RF over RG is V out. Okay, great. Um, so then it's time for me to make another ideal op-amp approximation utilization, and that is that these voltages are equal to each other, right? So I can replace my VAs in this equation with this VB here. So if I wrote this, this in equation implies that VB is equal to V out over one plus. RF over RG. There we go, so you can see it. So if I take this and I substitute it wherever I see a VA over in this equation, then this is going to give me, um, let's see, I'll write this as V1 over R1 minus 1 over R1 times in place for VA, VA is equal to VB, which is this thing here. V out over one plus RF over RG plus V2 over R2 minus one over R2 times V out over one plus RF over RG, and that's equal to zero. Okay, so I took my equation that I got from my feedback circuitry and I substitute it into the equation in my summing circuitry. So I'm using kind of um, circuit analysis on both sides of the op amp. Great, so then if I simplify this, what do I get? Um, this is going to give me, I'll write my V1 and R1 plus V2, R2 together, and this will be minus V out over one plus RF over RG, times one over R1 plus one over R2 is equal to zero. And from here, I'm going to take this term here, I'm gonna bring it over to the other side so that way I can start to make my equation for V out in terms of V, my V ins, which are V1 and V2. Okay, so that's gonna give me that V out over one plus 
RF over RG times 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 is equal to V1 over R1 plus V2 over R2. And then I need to do some arithmetic here. So how about I start with, um, if I multiply all this stuff over to the right hand side and get V out by itself. So this is going to give me V out is 1 plus RF over RG times V1 over R1 plus V2 over R2 all over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Okay, great. And then suppose I multiply both top and bottom by um, R1 times R2. So if I do this, R1 times R2, and then it times R1 times R2. I'm just trying to kind of simplify it since I got all these fractions all over the place. Um, so if I do that here, my numerator will become I have V out is 1 plus RF over RG times V1 R2 plus V2 R1. And then in the denominator, I have just R2 plus R1. Okay, so that looks a little bit cleaner. Then if you want, if you want to get rid of this RG in this fraction denominator, we can do the same trick, which is multiply top and bottom by RG if you want to. Um, and this is going to be RG plus RF times V1 R2 plus V2 R1 all over RG times R2 plus R1. Okay, so I'm just kind of doing arithmetic at this point. Um, it doesn't really matter what your form is. So um, at this point, we can calculate the V out based on whatever value of our input voltages are and then all the resistors that are in the circuit in this configuration. And you'll notice that um, the sign of V out and the right hand side of the equation have the same sign. Okay, so there's no negatives, there's no inverting that occurs because this is a non inverting summing amplifier. Um, so we're actually not going to, um, this is not in your textbook, and we're not going to do any homework problems on this, but I just wanted to, you to know that it exists, and this is kind of the general framework for um, how, or the general. Um, kind of form for what um, a non-inverting summing amplifier might look like. So in the next video, I'll show you um, the different amplifier.